maybe sticking on evolution for a bit because uh, it's tended to create some interesting things. Uh, bipedal walking. Do you, uh, why the heck did evolution give us, I think we're, are we the only mammals that walk on two feet? No, I mean, there's a bunch of animals that do it a bit. A bit. Uh, there's a, there, I think we are the most successful bipeds. I, I think some, uh, I think I read somewhere that um, the reason the, you know, evolution made us walk on two feet is because uh, there's an advantage to being able to carry food back to the tribe or something like that. So like you can carry, it's kind of this communal uh, cooperative thing. So like to carry stuff back to um, to a place of shelter and so on to share with others. Um, do you understand at all the value of uh, walking on two feet from a, both a robotics and a human perspective? Yeah, I, there are some great books written about evolution of walking, evolution of the human body. I think it's easy though to make bad evolutionary arguments. Sure. Um, <laughs> Most of them are probably bad, but what, what else can we do? I mean, I think um, a lot of what dominated our evolution probably was not the things that worked well, sort of in the steady state. Um, uh, you know, when things are when things are good. But but uh, for instance, people talk about what we should eat now because our ancestors were meat eaters or or whatever. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah, but probably you know the reason that one pre uh, pre homo sapien species versus another survived was not because of whether they ate well uh when there was lots of food but when the ice age came you know probably one of them happened to be in the wrong place one of them happened to uh forage a food that was okay even even when the the glaciers came or something like that i mean there's a million is, variables that contributed and we can't and our Actually, the amount of information we're, we're working with and telling these stories, uh, these evolutionary stories, is uh, is very little. So, j yeah, just like you said, it, it seems like if we if we study history, it seems like history turns on like these little events that uh, that otherwise would seem meaningless. But in, in the grant, like when you in retrospect, were um, turning points. Absolutely, and that that's probably how. Like somebody got hit in the head with a rock because somebody slept with the wrong person back in the, in the cave days and somebody get, get angry and that turned, uh, you know, warring tribes com combined with the environment, all those millions of things and the meat eating, which I get a lot of criticism because I, I don't know, um, I don't know what your dietary processes are like, but these days I've been eating only meat, which is... Um, there's, there's a large community of people who say, yeah, probably make evolutionary arguments and say, you're doing a great job. There's a, probably an even larger community of people, including my mom, who says it's a deeply unhealthy, it's wrong, but I just feel good doing it. But you're right, I, these evolutionary arguments can be flawed. But is there anything interesting to pull out for um There's for a great walking? book, by the way, um, well, a series of books by Nicholas Taleb about fooled by randomness and black swan. Um, highly recommend them. but. Yeah, they make the point nicely that probably it was a few random events that, yes, yeah. maybe it was uh, someone getting hit by a rock, as you say. Uh, that said, do you think, uh, I don't know how to ask this question or how to talk about this, but there's something elegant and beautiful about moving on two feet, obviously biased because I'm human, but uh, from a robotics perspective too, you work with robots on two feet, is it um, is it all useful to build robots that are on two feet as opposed to four? Is there something useful about I think it? The most, um, I mean, the reason I spent a long time working on wa bipedal walking was because it was hard, and it was um, it challenged control theory in ways that I thought were important. Um, I wouldn't have ever tried to convince you that um, you should start a company around bipeds or something like this. There are people that make pretty compelling arguments, right? I think the most compelling one is that the world is built for uh, the human form. And if you want a robot to work in the world we have today, then you know having a human form is a pretty good way to go. Um, and there are, there are places that a biped can go that would be hard for uh, other form factors to go, even natural places. But um, 
you know, at some point in the long run, we'll be building our environments for our robots, probably. And so maybe that argument falls aside. 